how do you even start this? So a quick foreword, uh, this video has topics that some viewers might find sensitive, including mental health, and I am not a mental health professional. If you are having problems with your mental health, you should definitely speak to a mental health professional. So I've done my best on this channel to keep my private life separate from the channel. Uh, however, in this scenario, the private life is directly affecting the channel. At the end, I'm going to discuss the implications of what I'm telling you for the channel because it is as much yours as it is, is as it is mine and what it looks like going forward. So you guys are my family. You may be on the other side of a camera, but you have enabled me to chase my passion and my creativity through supporting me on Patreon or even just by watching the videos and the overwhelming positivity in the comments and on the Facebook group is just amazing. So thank you for everything that you guys have contributed to the channel. So you deserve to understand what's happening uh, and I'll outline that at the end of this video. The middle of this video is going to be concerned with mental health and it is something that I've realized over the last three weeks that is something that you take for granted until something major happens within your life. Now, for me, that major event has been my partner of eight and a half years leaving me. This has brought to my attention the fragility of even sound mental health to situational pressures within people's lives and how often that can actually occur in everyday life around us. To compound this fact, 10 days after my partner separated from me, my best mate's partner separated from him, which has made me realize how common of an occurrence this kind of grief happens. I actually wrote the outline to this script um, about 11 days into the breakup and I just wasn't composed enough to put onto camera. So uh, we're now at about, oh, what day is it? We're now at about day 21. So you may have noticed that the frequency of the videos has increased because I'm distracting myself. Um, so mental health, we don't talk about it enough. Generally, I am a very stable individual. I have um, a healthy amount of anxiety, a very optimistic outlook. And that has just highlighted the fact that the times that I've been through right now would be so much harder for anyone that is already suffering ongoing mental health issues. Now at the time of writing a script, I've got a note saying uh, these have been the 10 hardest days of continual moments of my life. And I want you to know that the loss of someone close to you, relationship collapse, all of these things, it is absolutely normal to feel this way. The incredible and overwhelming hopelessness and grief is okay. Um, it's, I'm not okay, but it's okay. Uh, and if I was okay, it wouldn't be okay. I wanted to make this video to let anyone that's feeling alone to understand that you're not alone and that you're definitely not alone in feeling that way. And that there are ways out of the darkness that I was feeling when I wrote this and that there are people you can talk to and actions that you can take to slowly regain your happiness when you're in a situation such as this. Now, I'm gonna outline a few tools that I've been using or you can use with a mental health professional, with loved ones, or just self-guided by yourself. Now, number one is always going to be talking to people. Now, this is really hard because generally the person that you've lost that's closest to you is generally the first choice of person that you would go to to talk to. However, family, friends, people in your interests group, sit down and talk to anyone about the issues you're having and the reasons you're having them. And there are always hotlines that you can call if you need a professional to speak to free of charge. I'll link those in the description. Now, the second tool that I'm going to recommend for anyone, even people with a healthy state of mind at this point, is CBT, which is Cognitive 
behavioral therapy. Now, self-guided CBT, it's basically mindfulness packaged in a modern psychological framework. Essentially, it is guided meditation through your problems and putting you on a better path to a brighter future. It's been clinically demonstrated to be effective against anxiety, depression, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, relationship problems, eating disorders, and a range of other things, and has as good, if not more effective results than medications. Again, that is CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And there are self-guided apps that you can get for your phone that will guide you through this process without having to spend a cent. Now, on that subject, I will actually recommend a book that I've found extremely helpful throughout my grieving process. And that will be linked in the description below. It is Mindfulness, and it is a guide to an eight-week mindfulness CBT course. It's an audiobook that you listen to, or you can buy the print version. And it has been massively helpful before and after the circumstances that I've recently experienced. The next tools are going to be obvious. Every person is going to tell you it's going to take time to get over the grief of this loss. And you may not want to get over it, but the healthiest way to deal with your time in the meantime is to remain as productive as possible. So number three, I'm going to recommend that you build a hydroponic system. If you're on this channel, you're already interested in it, pick a video, pick a system, build the system, make something that's going to make tomorrow a little bit better than today and then plant some seeds. Planting seeds is an investment in your future and you get to watch your future grow into something that you can eat and will provide you with sustenance and put you on the path to a healthier you. Grow a plant that will nourish your body and through the action of growing your own food, you can nourish your mind. Wholesome, productive activities will keep you busy as well as adding to the value of your life. So for myself, I have rejoined the gym. I am focusing on what goes into my body. I'm focusing on the strength of my body and the strength of my mind and the connection between those two, which is often overlooked. And I'm refocusing in a non-selfish way on myself and my direction in life, which has up until this point revolved around another person who was essentially the keystone of my life, a core belief. And once you remove that keystone, once you remove that core belief, everything built around it seems to crumble and you have to pick up the pieces and rearrange them into another self that you will be proud of and that is stronger than before. Now, the thing that I found immediately after the breakup was meaning seemed to fall away from all the activities of day-to-day -day life. So the one thing that you're going to have to do after the breakup or loss of a loved one is you're going to have to pretend to be normal. I have this joke with my mates. I'd, I'd take a picture of myself and say, look at me, I'm a human doing human things because you've forgotten why you do these things. I had to remind myself to eat uh, at least once a day, and my entire routine was shattered. So I had to build a brand new routine for the new me that I was discovering. So I want you to look at, it does not seem like an opportunity, and I understand that, but I need you to look at it as an opportunity to do and be what you want and who you want to be. And you should not waste that opportunity. It is a blessing in disguise and in a long time you will look back and if you've made the right decisions you'll be grateful for the opportunity. I'm now three weeks in. It's been 11 days. Yeah, it's been 11 days since I wrote this. I wanted to wait because I couldn't compose myself in front of a camera but I do think it needs to be shared and if the video helps at least one person it was worth it. So, okay. So, 
brick and mortar, the channel direction going forward is extremely uncertain. Uh, I am in talks with an accountant um, and a mortgage broker to try and take over the house. However, I'm only working two days a week in my previous job because I had left my responsibilities to focus on the channel. I've obviously added a lot of value to our property with the construction of a studio and a greenhouse, as well as multiple dams that we've put onto the property. And the banks do not look favorably at a business that is really only a year old. So I have no idea what Hucho's looks like going forward. However, I have direction, I have purpose. On my original launch of Patreon video, I mentioned that I have a passion for science education and I consider that what I'm doing here. Amongst the mistakes and um, silly designs, I think that the channel provides value to society and I would like to continue that. If I cannot secure the property, who chose will look very different. It may be scaled back a lot, but the purpose will remain the same. And that purpose is to allow whoever wants to grow their own food an easy and reliable way of doing it with the correct information and the right guidance, which I hope I'm providing. So again, if you are suffering through any type of mental health issues, please reach out to anyone at all, especially a mental health professional, if you have access to one, and know that you are definitely not alone. <sighs> Thank you for watching this episode of Who Chose.